Hey, everybody. We're back in the duck call room, and we have a special guest today. You know, I used to run around with Willie uh, a long time, but now we have a person who's known him probably the longest. And you may be thinking that's Corey, but uh, she slept in and didn't show up. So Jordan Summit <laughs> has joined us. Hey, Jordan. I'm just slightly less good looking than Corey and shorter depends on who you ask okay well you're definitely shorter that's, that, that, that that point is not up for debate but um but we're back isn't that we right? are back with the are we running guess. the I, clock ain't moving so you gotta ignore the clock you hey. just gotta go back. well hey look i figured the clock gotta be running boys no it's fine ladies hey. and gentlemen right. we do have a clock that you can't okay see. we've got a real case of the mondays on a thursday it's oh, fine it's it cool it's, it's and this cool. is gonna air on a tuesday it's already yeah. thursday it is Thursday. Good grief. I it's lost blown by. I lost a couple of days this week. Sleeping? Huh. Well, no. I just said they, they went somewhere. Because <laughs> I didn't think it was Thursday. What did you think it was? How time flies when you're having fun. There you go. There you go. Look, he... Uh, for for those of you that don't know... Yeah, you And you wouldn't... Jordan. Well, you wouldn't know this. You wouldn't get John David's reference if you weren't on the production schedule for the Duck Call Room podcast. His slight at Corey was because she was supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. I made no slight, sir. Huh? (laughs) You did what? Uh, Do we need to rewind? Anyway, Corey Mm -hmm. wasn't here. That's okay. She's very busy. Um, She's your cousin. She's family. You can get away with a lot more than the rest of us can. Maybe. And I mean, you made a reference to if somebody, you had to invite somebody somewhere to be on time and you got a million dollars if they were late or you died if they were on time. You said the first person you'd invite was Corey. 100%. So you said that off air. I just said it on air to put it on the record. Hey, hey. But, hey. you got to be on the record. So, you know, but anyway, so we, we adapt and we overcome. We do have lots of employees here. So, Jordan is somebody that needs to be on here because Jordan is the keeper. Of, of a lot of secrets. He's the keeper of secrets. Uh oh. See, look at him. He's got look the key. At him. I thought He's got y'all just keys invited me to the closet, is... boys, where the skeletons are at. It's not a closet, but it's oh. a hard drive. Well, hey, <laughs> I'm telling you, hey, he's the keeper of the keys. I thought y'all were just having me in because I happened to walk by. <laughs> That was a lot of. Well, it. that's part of it. Right. That's part of it. That was at least fifty yeah. percent of it. I said I'm inviting the next person that walks by that door in, that's and right. it just so happens you you right. were it. Just so needed it. a warm body to sit in this. Welcome chair. to the duck call room. Yeah, oh, that's how we do things. We really just wing it. Yeah, I don't know why, but my hands are really sweaty. Jordan, don't be nervous. That's fine. Yeah. Everything's, Everything's good. Cool. Everything. Jordan's worked here longer than you, right? Jordan, how many times? How long have you worked here? Uh, going on seventeen years. How many times have you been fired? Hmm. Well, two for sure. <laughs> two, two for sure. There might have been a third, but we'll, we're not going to talk about that one. <laughs> I got out of two of them. And, and I'm not going to say anything bad about Corey because she got me out of the other two firings. So Corey's great. See, there you she, go. She kept right. me from getting fired. And she gives you your big break on the podcast. That's so right. Like, I'm yeah. finally in front of the camera. This is it. Look, yeah, Jordan has spent his whole career, not whole career, but a lot of your career behind the lens, not in front of the lens. So you followed us around. You've you've done so many unspeakable oh, yeah. things and listened, mainly listened to us on several mics. And like, I don't know how you've kept it together as well as you have. Oh, well, so. you know. I, 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 it, it's God a, is good, Martin. I mean, <laughs> gotta have faith. I just, I love it. I have fun. <laughs> you guys are entertaining. That's why I do it. That's good. Hey, we love having you around, Jordan. He's a cataloger. That means he can put stuff away, you know, and don't bring it out. Don't bring it out. That's right, unless it's needed. <laughs> don't make the cameraman mad. That's right. Hey, that's the stick to this. Okay. okay. Don't make the don't camera. irritate the cameraman. Okay. I agree. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Hunter. <laughs> I'm not worried about that guy. <laughs> He's a fine figure of a man. He's only been here like that's a year. Right, boys. Hey. He ain't got many secrets. Oh, he's been here two. two. He well, holding okay. up two. We ain't even been doing it. Have we been doing this two years? Almost. In really? Like, in like November, it'll be two years of the duck call room. Wow. Holy this is like cow. episode a hundred and Hunter hundred. 166 of these bad boys. Hey, Y'all ain't tired of us yet? <laughs> Probably shouldn't ask that. That's the comment section I on I figured YouTube. out something right here. What? what? This is Duck Commander's happy place. <laughs> what does that mean? 
just what I said. This is the happy place. Well, that that He's hat wrong. This room, I'm serious. This I hear room, a lot of laughing when I'm oh down no, the hallway. A lot of laughing. This room has always contained laughter. That's true. That is a true statement. Unless you're here after five working in this room, then there was not much. Yeah, then there's much. No, no. There was a I'm lot glad, of frustration. I never was in that. Involved in that. No, no. About <laughs> three was all you had in you. <laughs> No, um, hey, no but, overtime hey, for Sai. Yeah. Three, three was all I could handle, boys. Oh my goodness gracious, Jordan. So let's just put you on the spot. Who's yeah. your favorite Robertson? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You're looking at one. Hey, tell the truth. <laughs> tell the truth. Did it? I don't care. That's an easy. I'm gonna go Sai. Oh, good grief. Yes, mine too. Yeah, that's everybody's though. So you have to. Actually, I'm gonna go K. Then I'm gonna go Sai. Whoa. Hey. Okay. hey. That's a smart Hey, that's a good that's a smart that's a good call. Right there, that's a good call. K, yeah. then Cy. All right, then, who's getting bronze? <laughs> bronze is the interesting one. You know what's funny is I really miss Jep. Really? Yeah, I miss having Jep here. You miss Jep? Maybe, maybe because we were just like, you know, in the trenches together. Yeah, know? and his work ethic really inspired you? Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, we're but. guns blazing today, folks. <laughs> Guns oh, I'm sorry. It's just it's uh, the end of the day when you get hey, like this. It's been man, a long like, week, boy. Hey. They're tired. It's yeah. fun. It's, I'm not tired. It's all in good fun. No, it's it's good. Now Jordan and Jep did share an office together for a really long time. So you 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 know Jep probably better than any other employee here for sure. Even his brother. Oh like, yeah. There's I mean, no doubt about that. So I live across the pond from Jep. I don't see him often, but he was fishing the other day for like a Seven whole minutes. Really? He didn't catch anything. I watched. <laughs> Nothing. Did you tell him stop by the honey hole? You take. No, because I've never caught anything out of that pond. He's not fishing either. Whoa. <laughs> Just in that <laughs> one specific place. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> Very finicky fish. Very finicky. Oh man. So you've you've been here. How old are you, Jordan? You're what? We're the same age, aren't we? Like thirty-seven. I quit counting at thirty. I think I'm. You're you thirty-seven? Mm-hmm. When did you turn thirty-seven? You're no, I will be in like a week or I'm so. I'm 37. Yeah. I'm just a little older than him, but not by like a full year. Did you legitimately just have to like think of it? Yes. Yeah. I constantly ask my wife how old I am. That's because she's older. She, Jordan married an older woman. Good. Jordan just, nah, it's, hey, man's got game. I hate to say this about both of you. Oh, boy. Duck Commander has not been kind to either one of you. <laughs> have you looked in the mirror? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Careful, Jordan. Our fans do not like it when you throw no, it back at Cy. I love Cy. Si. Si. He's awesome. You just have to take uh, it from Cy. Si. One, one thing you got to have here if you work for the Duck Commander Bunch, you got to have tough skin, guys. Mm. That's right. Mm. Oh, Jordan's is okay. made of leather. I've seen yeah. what that poor oh, yeah. boy's been through. Yeah. So He's been fired yeah. twice for crying out. How many times yeah. have you been fired from Duck Commander? Well, <laughs> they tried to fire me all the time. Okay, but, but you just I, kept hanging around. I, yeah, I just you know I'm like a bad penny. I just keep showing up, boy. <laughs> you know, that's the way I was with the military. The military didn't know what to do with me. You got fired from the military? Oh, they tried to, numerous times. And you just show back up the next day? And I just show back, come back to work. <laughs> Did we yeah, fire that him? Works. Well, he's uh, here. That works. Size oh, sure. motto: just keep showing up. No, no. Yeah. It worked. Hey, these days that's that's a plus. Oh, I had a whole. If conversation. you got an employee that shows up, keep him. Hey, yeah, keep him. Forget about if he works or not. If he ain't, if he ain't shows up every day, you got a jewel, boys. Yeah. I had a whole conversation with a kid the other day. I was like, I want you to be successful in life, and all you got to do is show up, man. Not, like, you can't yeah. even do that. Yeah, you can't even show up. There you go. That's pretty bad, ain't it? It's like being really late to a podcast or something. Can't even show up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tough skin, boys. Nah, I'm kidding. Look, let's hey, take our first break. Joking, we'll be back right after We that. love them. Jordan, you're a man of the new age. What? You got any idea how much you spend a month on subscription services? Mm. <laughs> there is no telling. Well, most people think that it's about $80 a month, but by the time you put the pen to paper, it's about $200 a month. Ooh. And that is where our friends over at Rocket Money can come in and help you. Now, look, you say Rocket Money, didn't y'all just talk about one like this called Truebill? Truebill is now Rocket Money. You have to check out Rocket Money. They help manage and cancel subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about with just a tap. 
If it sounds too familiar, that's because you've heard me talk about our favorite app, Truebill, before. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Truebill is now backed by Rocket Companies and just changed their name to Rocket Money. You know what sounds cooler than Truebill? Rocket, Rocket. Money. Rocket! It's going to the sky, boys. Why? Well, for one, Truebill has grown from a bill management app into a full-on personal finance empowerment tool that helps over 3.4 million people with budgeting, lowering bills, canceling subscriptions, and more, saving each of their members on average $700 a year. Who doesn't need $700 more a year? I want it. Bottom line, Rocket Money is everything that we've loved about Truebill, but with a fresh new look and feel. Look, Johnny D, uh, here, I'll just give you an example. Johnny D forgot that he paid to watch high school football in mm-hmm. Colorado. That'll get you. Yep. But I paid for it for three months yep. in March. Yep. And didn't want to watch but one game. And the championship was in December. Yep. So there you go. I hey, mean, right. Now I got Rocket Money. See, that's what we're here to tell everybody. Look, start canceling your unused subscriptions and save money at rocketmoney.com slash duck. That's rocketmoney.com slash duck. duck. Or you can download the app from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Well, we can't. Uh, nobody knows who he is, but did, did y'all know Walter got engaged? No. What? To a woman? We got to get Walter on the podcast. Uh-huh. But I want to be here when he gets on. So. Yeah. He'd be in the studio This audience. must be a new employee. Former employee. Oh, former? You remember Walter? No, can't say Young, that. young kid, kind of big, very blonde strong. hair. Very strong. Very d- didn't talk much at all. Yeah, he filmed you duck hunting a few times. Yeah. Oh, okay. Real quiet. Jordan's You'd know him if you saw him. Okay. He would you tell know. you his name is Matthew, but it's really Walter. Yeah. So that is what Jordan does. Um, to any new employee, Jordan looks at him says the first name that comes in his head, and it is stuck on a lot of people for a long time. Why do you do that to people, George? Did Phil teach you that? Oh, of course. <laughs> Look, I'm he hung stu- around hey, Phil too much. They, they, they still call me Frodo. That was the first thing when I walked in. They said, Frodo Baggins. <laughs> I was like, what is that? I mean, and it person. is stuck to this day. I literally saw Phil like two weeks ago. Came in, and he, he said that line right there. He said, Frodo. Duck Commander in time has not been good to you. <laughs> I'm just glad to know I'm not the only one. They see a couple of 37 year old, 37 year olds with gray hair in there. Well, hey, that's the thing that I was noticing. What? I'm supposed to have gray hair in my beard. And you have had it. Yeah. For a while. Uh, well, hey. But you boys are young, and y'all got gray hair in your beard. And your nephews color theirs, so that's it's fine. fine. Whoa! <laughs> oh, the, the secret is out. <laughs> I've never colored anything. On it my can't head. be a secret. One episode, it was really light. The next one was really dark. It doesn't like that Willie, doesn't just happen. Willie's hair is blonde right now, if we all remember. Hey, he actually looks better. We that is it. false. No, that Frosted ain't false. Tips. Hey, you th- it fits his personality now. Cause he looks weird. No, blonde. Cause he, D D goes with blonde. Dumb. <laughs> He's. A- <laughs> <laughs> We're just blasting them out, boys. Ooh. All right, who we want to make fun of Anytime I got to get a shot at Willie, I'm going to take it, guys. Yeah, we'll you got to do that. Fire away. Right. Fire away. Um, so, Jordan, <laughs> we, we need a story because this is an hour-long podcast um, of, of a good – do you have a good Phil story or a good Willie story? I know you got something. So, so when I first came to work here, uh, you know, I, I'm in the video world, right? And so when I first came to work here, Willie put me down at Phil's, and it was like middle of the summer. And my job for about the first two weeks, Phil had just cleared out this big duck hole, and then he had burned it. And my job was to pick up sticks for two weeks. <laughs> over two at, weeks. Over at the burn. I'm, I remember them days. Yeah. Golly. <laughs> come on. Come on, go with me. It won't take about 15 minutes. That's right. For two weeks, I picked up sticks, yeah. burnt yeah. sticks, and I'm just putting them in a pile. All day. All day. And you came here to film. I came here to a film. A videographer. I was so excited that I got upgraded to the warehouse where I got to use the tape gun. <laughs> Working with Godwin. Working with Godwin <laughs> and Jep. You know, Jep's in there watching TV. Just sitting there packaging duck calls. Godwin's out there on the tape gun. Jace is in there doing his duck call building. So I was sleeping. I got the whole experience hey, look, before. Well, how you get? To, hey, you do what you do best. <laughs> yeah, the early two thousands at Duck Commander. Find your. It was amazing. 
Nice. So, yeah, you started here at 20. That's incredible. Yep. Yeah, because you sent Willie just an email. It was like, hey, I want to work here, right? Yeah. Uh, I sent him an email from my college address, and he happened to get it. And he says to this day the only reason he answered it was because of my email address being at harding.edu. That happened to be the same college Willie went to. And so he said, "For says, a day or two. That's, that's what got." <laughs> he said, "I only answered your email because of the email address." So, and then so he was like, "Ah, oh, we went to college the same place for a couple of days." That's right. And he hired you to pick up sticks. Picking up sticks. I think hey, you got to put your time in. That just proves the <laughs> that point. is true. Yeah, that proves the point that God does move in mysterious ways. I'm serious. And Willie moves in even stranger ways. That's pretty cool. That hey, you're you get. Yeah, and then he said, okay, yeah, that's what done it. Kind of like I did. I just made myself an email here, and then I was hired. So I'm pretty much. See, that's awesome. See, you, you just, just you hang around. Yeah. Like, to Sai's point, you just show back up. Yeah, you nice show, show up. up again. All of a sudden, you end up on payroll. 90% of the battle. I mean, you got you to gotta not cash your check for a few days, but, you know, you Sometimes. still end up on there, payroll. Yeah. Yeah, There's going to be like seven people show up next yeah. week, by the well, way. Well, at least yeah. normally they would tell they you. They better not hang around yeah. too long. Yeah. yeah. But they, they will normally, get put to work. They normally tell you, hey, you need to hold this for a couple of days before you take it to the bank. Mm-hmm. Who? Yeah. You miss those days? Uh, no, I do not miss. I do enjoy the <laughs> fact that it, on Thursday nights I wake up Friday morning and I have a payment to my checking account That's right. oh, didn't you go a long deposit. time without being paid at I, all i went like three months with no pay but that was me i volunteered my services yeah, you were just, what yeah yeah i i was working through school everything's fine i had plenty of money duck no commander problem. was weird before i got here Mark, yeah it, martin was up there literally i'm in there editing and martin's in there just picking up the phone cold calling people you want duck commander duck calls you Walmart. want dvds i mean just walmart baby making sales baby that's all awesome. sales baby sales doing my thing and uh yeah, no, I worked for like three months with no paycheck, and then I finally got one, and then I was asked to hold it till like Tuesday, till the till the other check from Bass Pro cleared the bank so we could make payroll. Yeah, Time in case y'all want to know what this place was really like, <laughs> if y'all want to see behind the duck, if you want to know that you know what we really started working here for is because we loved it. It wasn't. That's it right. didn't have nothing to do with the pay or the food was great. Yeah. I will say that. Well, I got upgraded from the food because I started at the Brownlee house, not down at Phil and K's. Then I got moved to Phil and K's. Yeah, because so then I got to upgrade. Oh, yeah. Duck Commander used to be run out of two houses. Yeah, we had Duck Commander North and Duck Commander South. That's what we called it. Phil and K's in my phone is still DC South. Is it really? Uh Yep. Yep. That's fine. 100%. I miss the lunches. That's what I really miss. Oh, buddy. When you'd have every, Miss K just come in there and feed everybody. Ain't that the, the one person you didn't want to get behind, though? Who? John Godwin. God. Love him to death. That's Love how he got that. him in the line. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that Godwin, that's how Godwin added that Duck Commander 75. It was called Duck Commander 50. <laughs> he was overachieving. The upgrade. It's a true thing. Yeah. He, yeah. It, when you started working down there, it was because you were a captive audience. Yeah. It was too far to come back town to get something to eat. So you ate whatever Kay had, and it was made with love and butter. <laughs> yeah. And always, and always really good. Yeah. <laughs> but it was definitely made with love and yeah. butter. Kay Real been trying butter. to fatten me up for 40 years. But I si slept it off. She's getting there. That's right. Hey. After a big meal, you got to take a nap, boys. I miss the days of like going down the land and side si being on a motor grader, like fixing the roads. Well, no, no, I kept the roads up. Yeah, and now right they now you can you can lose a full four wheeler down there. <laughs> That's stone. in the hole. You got to get stone on that. No, no, I'm serious. You can lose a four wheeler in the holes in the road. Si so I was a great road man. Oh, I took care of the road. Yeah, Bill showed up one time and I had tobacco and from the gate. For about 200 yards, I had just just a big mound of dirt in the middle of the road. I hadn't had time to grade it out yet. And he come up there, and uh, the guy that used to own it, the ending, mm-hmm. hit the roof. And Phil come up and said, what are you doing? I said, hey, I've, I'm sick of these ruts in this road. I'm fixing to build it up and, and make it, you know, have a mound in the center where it'll run off in the ditches. He said, we don't own this. I said, well, they'll never know the difference once I get it all graded down, son. So I guess. Said, Wait, you worked on other people's properties? Oh, no. And he said, hey, put it all back in the ditch. 
I said, are you serious? He said, yeah, I'm serious. Put it all back in the ditch. Well, I did. But I left a little bit for a mound, so yeah. I had the roads were mounded up through there. Yeah, he had him a little crown. Back. He had him a little yeah. crown on the road. No, that, that place went to pot when Cy quit oh, yeah. working on the equipment. Yeah. Because Phil, Phil, every time it'd break down, Phil said, Cal, you, you tear up everything you get on. I said, I know, and I'm the only one that gets on it and uses it. <laughs> That's the reason it's breaking down with me. Right. Phil's idea of fixing a mud oh. hole is just go wider. Yeah, yeah just take another <laughs> just, route around, yeah, around just, it. Just That's why there's it. a lot of wide areas <laughs> down there in the woods, okay? <laughs> yeah. What happened there? A hole. Yeah. Don't go that direction anymore. You'll lose a vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, Phil's, Phil's method of fixing a pothole was just keep going wider, boy. That's it. Just, just spread it on out. Just go wide. That's got all the equipment he could ever want to fix them. Nope. I ain't got time for that. You know, what's funny, too, is when I first came to work here, which it still holds true to this day, Phil would always accuse camera guys of just being weird. Very just, you know, the whole thing he does. And weird, weirdos. And, and uh, one of those days when I was burning sticks, I was coming back. My, my wife, Angela, she was working with Miss Kay. And so we were coming back to our house that day. We were driving down uh, Lee Anding, and, and I see something cross the road, a black figure cross the road. You saw it too? Hold on. No, no, no let me tell the story. Can I finish? Can I finish? <laughs> Sorry. So <laughs> I see this black figure cross the road, and this is before the iPhone, okay? No phones. We got Motorola razors. You ain't flipping that open and getting a good video. And so we pull up there. And it stands up, and it's looking at us. And I was like, man, that's a big dog. <laughs> and we get up a little closer. My wife says, that's not a dog. That's a bear. And I immediately called Phil. Uh, do you remember this? Ah. Uh. Okay. Well, called Phil, and his first thing was, well, where was your camera? And I said, well, I didn't have a camera. And he said, well, Frodo, I, that, I've never seen a bear out here, ever. And it was like a week later. I think y'all saw uh, a big track out on the land, but I, I got made fun of for like a week because I had no idea about the panther thing. And they were like, oh, yeah, every camera guy that comes through here is talking about the black panther and how they've seen it. And Sai's got this black panther he's been seeing. and It's there. I'm surprised that I've never heard this. Oh, you've heard it. Huh? You've heard it. You just don't remember. I don't remember ever hearing about a bear. <laughs> it's a black bear. That's yeah. back when you was busy. You didn't have all that time to You're file in your memory like yeah, you do right. now. Now you got a stone cold memory, which is right. incredible. Right. But back with anything, I'm telling you, they never did tell me this. That he saw a bear. Yeah, they never did tell me that Gordon, you know, Gordon, Gordon seen a bear. Because when he said, when he said, "Hey," he stood up. I was saying, "Uh oh." Oh boy. Some of the, some of the big dog, and I was saying, "No, dogs normally don't stand up." Not unless you got a treat. <laughs> yeah, you know, unless you left unless this one that tree and a squirrel. Yeah. Oh man. Phil had one of them, Labrador Retriever, golden. So add Jordan. Wouldn't bark. Wouldn't bark. Add Jordan to the list of the employees that has okay. seen a large yeah. black figure yeah. in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a bear. It's bad. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. He has a reasonable it explanation for what he saw. There you go. All right, we'll take another break. We'll be back right after this. Martin, Yo, I see you on your phone. I, I'm playing a game. What are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm fishing. You're doing it the old-fashioned way, by the way. Why? I'm There's about, a better way? There's a better way. Right now, you're being held back from the ultimate mobile gaming experience uh -oh. because they made a controller that you plug into your phone, to your iPhone, and it's just on both sides. So it turns it right into like an old-school thing where you got the screen, you got the buttons on each side, and it's, it's super fancy. You know? For real? For real. If you're busy and on the go with only minutes to spare and you're like Martin and you're playing games between breaks and you want to, you know, be good at it instead of like Martin and like struggling over there, buy a Backbone controller. They're super cool. They sent us a couple. They just released the PlayStation edition. So look, your PlayStation can be at home and you can be playing on your phone with a controller from anywhere in the world. Look, it looks super cool. It's got, it, it looks legit and it doesn't look like a cheap piece of junk like you might think you've plug into your phone it is super nice it works really well look you simply plug in your iphone to the backbone and enjoy just like you're at home on any console it, it with remote play or cloud streaming services or like martin and you're playing app store games by just pressing your thumbs all over your screen 
Martin, Why? you got to get one of these controllers. But the fish are biting. Nah, you, we're go, I'm going to show you how to do it after this. Go to playbackbone.com slash duck now to order your backbone for a limited time and get free access to over 350 console games and perks. Backbone is now the official partner of Diablo Immortal. Not only is the game specifically optimized for Backbone, but you will also receive $10 of in-game perks. Find your next adventure at playbackbone.com slash duck. Jordan, you know Cy is famous for Black Panthers. Thank you. Oh, and there yeah. is research being done right now in Michigan. I have many emails to prove it. You oh. do, but you make sure that you take the time to read the statement from the DNR about what it really is. But that's neither here nor there. So you, you've been down on Phil's land a lot Yep. with a camera in your hand. Yep. Have you ever videoed a large black cat of any kind? or? I videoed a very dark bobcat. One time at about 100 yards filming Willie Deer Hunt. Okay. That's it. I seen. It looked I, like a bobcat that had been rolling in the mud. Like no, I seen something and I saw it three different times. Thank you. And I never identified it. Mm -hmm. First time I seen it was on the road to going to the dump. High noon. Lake. Okay. And when, he, when he, I seen it, I just gunned it four wheeler. And I come up there where Phil had dug dirt to put in the road or red at. You know, it was full of water now, and yep. there was ripples on the so water. Got right around. And I said, well, it was probably, I may have saw a big, giant river otter. But river I otter. don't think so. But I seen it three different times, never identified it. What do you believe it was, sir? I have no idea. At first, I said, well, it's the turkey fanning out his feathers <laughs> during okay. the rut. Nope, that wouldn't work. And then it was something else I have thought, it, thought it was. Oh, yeah, thought it was a cub bear, a young bear. Black bear. Mm hmm Well, Jordan saw one of them. Well, now, hey, it may have been a bear. It could have been a bear because it was just a big black blob is all is how I describe it. All right, so are you ready for the news out of Michigan, though? Yeah, all right. Oh. Give us the news out of Michigan. Boom, on the screen. They have spotted a large black feline, and the authorities are involved. So this one's a new photo. It's not the same photo that everybody sends from different places. Give it a year. Here's something uncanny. That looks just like what I saw in the middle of the road. Thank you. On Phil's property. It yep. looks like a house cat. What? No, no, that ain't a house cat. It's too squatty. No, no, no. That ain't a house cat. Jordan, do you want to be invited back? Hey, that's not a house cat. Trust <laughs> me. That is a big black cat. That yeah. probably weighs. It's a cat. I would say probably weighs all 60. 60 pounds. Oh, it's least. bigger than that. No, about 60, 65. How much does Sweet Pea weigh? Huh? Well, he, got, he weighed up to 40 one time at one time. I was 40, just curious. About 45 because we couldn't get him in. I had to push him, just push his belly inside <laughs> in to get him in his back <laughs> to take him to the vet. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had to just squeeze his body in and then push him in it. Yo, and he couldn't even move. Yo. Oh, man. Uh. So Hugh from Michigan sent that to me, and also about eight people on Instagram and four other emails. No, but, no. did you click the article? Yeah, I read it. And You did? Yeah. And what did the, the DNR say? That is a big black cat, and they're investigating it, but D, the, what, whoever you are, DNR, if you're listening, size just confirmed for you is a black panther. Even though they said it's a large domestic feline? It, well, no, they, no, they said no. It ain't no domestic cat. And domestic Joe Exotic had large domestic striped felines. Huh? Those that thing domestic. was hey, that they thing were in was, cages. Look, that thing was sleek. Okay. Jordan's good. And if you got if it, they showed him moving, he would be just fluid with his movement. Would he sound like a woman screaming? Uh and he can. I, being I, tortured. I'll, Brian said I'll it. tell Brian. you what I have. Shout out, Brian. Hey. Have you ever heard of like the red? I think it's a red wolf is what they used to have here. What, mm -hmm. What's the, what's? Yeah, red wolves. Red wolves. Yeah. Those those aren't common to see though anymore, right? No, I think they're pretty well extinct too. I saw one extinct of them. Extinct too. So I you're saying they're used it's to funny, be? Right it's funny. It's funny you mm. say that because Stone used to have a picture of it. Okay, it was a it was a big giant. Uh, uh, God, I can't wouldn't blank. Coyote. Coyote. Yeah. Okay, and he was red. Yep. Male. Yep. Beautiful thing. Yeah, I don't know what the they told me when they called me. Red wolf is anymore. You know, Stone told me, he said, hey, guess what? We just killed a big wolf. 
You know, that's what he told me over the phone. I said, come on. <laughs> I said, get out of here. He said, no. He said, I'll show you to the scene when we go deer hunting. Wow. Well, he, they had him in the cooler. They hung him up. Really? Yeah. And he, he was red, and, and most uh, coyotes are skinny. Yeah. You know, skinny. This one had been living well. He was, you know, he was fat and full out good. He looked like a wolf. I'm serious. Big time. What I saw was a wolf in my yard. A here? red wolf. Yeah. When yeah, you he lived here? Red, he was red colored, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know if it was here or Connor. No, but it 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 was at least 80 to 100 pounds. Like, okay. I, I had a big dog at the time, and it was bigger. But it was a big, I would call it a red wolf. Well, see, that's, everybody I've talked to is like, yeah, you didn't see a red wolf. That was something else. See, there's uh, only 19 to 21 of those. That's what I always, but I think you might have. That's what I always love about my family. When we when we go hunting and we're in a blind, duck blind, or any deer hunting, all that, I look so I love somebody telling me that oh that ain't what you saw with your eyes, <laughs> or oh oh no that ain't what you shot with that twenty gauge, you didn't kill that duck. <laughs> hey, I got a little news flash for you, idiot. These are my eyes, and this is my trigger that I just killed that duck with I, with my gun. If anybody would know, it'd be you. Yeah. yeah Thank you. So. I mean, yeah. look how thick them glasses are. Hey. He look, ain't going to miss see something. Hey, <laughs> that's it. I got, I'm, hey, I'm corrected 2020 better than 2020. That's what I'm talking about. I ain't got 2020. Okay. I was like 2040 hey, or something. I'm better than 2020. That's what's up. Eagle eyes. That's good. That is good. I wish I did have the eyes of an eagle. What would you do with them? Uh, I would enjoy life more. <laughs> What would you look at? <laughs> Everything I could. I tell you what, them rats he was shooting the other day wouldn't be safe. Hey, they ain't safe now. I killed three of them things with a pistol. How many Man, How many did pistol. you have? Huh? How many did you end up having? Oh, no, we didn't kill but uh, 10 he went on the other day. Regulation the, rat. Hey, no, no. Oh, yeah. The first time, Philip killed about 25. And I guarantee you, look, we saw 100. <laughs> there was 50 in the tree. 100? Oh, yeah. There was 50 in the tree. They climb. Hey, look! These rats climb a tree worse than a squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> and they I, make a I, good gumbo. Sure was hey, I was shocked. I was shocked that they climbed a tree like they did. Cause the first thing that happened, the first one slicked me. You know, cause what he done? He he's got a chicken coop. You know, for his chicken. Well, there's all kind of holes around the chicken coop. Well, first thing he done, he's run a garden hose out there, run it down in the hole, turn the water full pressure. So we sit there for about, I waited about five minutes. I had 22 in my hand, loaded with rat shot. <clears throat> Nothing happened. And warned around out of a hole and went back in too quick. And I said, ah, hey, Philip, here, I want, I'm on some tea. You you, you shoot it. Well, just as soon as I handed the gun, here they come, buddy, in mass. You know, there was 10 going up the tree. There's four or five running along the roof for this thing. Philip's just pow, pow, <laughs> pow. You know, he actually killed 25 of them. That, that. Golly. Yeah, and yep. look, I'm telling you, there was 50 left in the tree. Y'all have a rat problem out there at your chicken coop? Oh, no, we don't. Jordan raises I chickens. Got, chickens, turkeys. I Jordan, got a lot of that. are you interested in Are you meat? in the woods? Yeah, kind of. And no rats have showed up yet? No. Do you no. feed your chickens? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got rats. No, there's no rats. No, no. You, hey, you need to look around your chicken the, the, coop. because the, tur the turkeys you, keep them away. Oh. Uh, the no. turkeys will keep them away. No, turkeys ain't going to keep them away. Rats okay. are coming. You ain't never met his turkeys. Them turkeys mean. They're mean. Are they? Oh. Some spurs about like that. Mean. Hey, you need to go out there and pet one of them. Oh, no, it'd be, the yard dead turkey. it'd be some dead turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, are you interested in making a YouTube video of Cy on a rat hunt? No, no, you got to do that. You were supposed to do it the other day. I know. I was, I was actually it. supposed to be on that yeah. hunt, and it didn't work out. And then what's funny was Philip was like, hey, I'll film it with my phone. And then I asked him, hey, how did it go? And his reply was, really fun, no good video. Yeah. But no, now no. I'm hearing he killed 25, or Philip killed oh, no. 25 of them. Hey, I'm telling you, Philip killed. He wasn't killed. video nothing. <laughs> hey, Philip killed, you know, he ain't no duck hunter enough, but hey, don't mess with rat. <laughs> that sucker is a rat killer from way back now. He's a better rat killer than a oh, cow yeah. man, apparently. Hey. I'm the old that rat I needed the footage. Boy. You got it's rat shot. It's it's like a yeah. a, a small uh you know shotgun. He said yeah. that boy is a but rat hey, killer. He's a rat killer from way back. From way back. Because hey, I'm 
I'm a witness to this. He killed 25 that first day. He's got but ice in his He bag. shot at, oh, he shot at 50. <laughs> okay, he killed 50%. That ain't bad. Oh I've never God. heard somebody be called a rat killer oh, no. from way back. Oh, no. yeah. That belongs yeah. to yeah. Hey, from way <laughs> back. Put that on a shirt. You're going to have to start calling that boy Hawk or something. Oh, hey, I'm He's that big you. of a rat killer. Oh, he's, he's definitely, he's definitely bad to the bone on rats. Though. Oh, Lord. Daddy. Well, let's take another break. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> We can talk about that time you missed that buck about seven times. Oh, we oh. Like six in perpetuity. <laughs> he said, six. Hold on, so, Jordan. All right, it don't hold, but it don't hold but six, and I ran it dry. Hold on, we <laughs> we were in a break. We were in a break. Jordan, were you the cameraman? Yeah. On he wasn't with me. No, I was with you. I filmed you. Oh uh, no, not on that. You on the buck? Uh, not on that. Oh, you talking about the one over Texas? Yeah. Oh, that wasn't the five shot. I could kill him though. All right, sir. I didn't kill him. the big one on Phil's you property. Killed him. You sir, kill him. I think we're gonna need Jordan's side of the story. The same oh no, way no, look, we hey, needed Miss Christine's. That side was of the a story. that was a deer from Japan. I wasn't in Japan, but apparently he missed another buck. Oh no, in Japan. Hey, look, he came from Japan because that deer committed Harry Carey. <laughs> I didn't kill him. I'm telling you, the deer committed Harry Carey. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> all right. So Jordan, you you yeah. you filmed all of us <laughs> sure. to some extent. But you're the one we were talking about, and we've talked about it here. Cy missed a buck deer several times in Texas. You you were filming that. How how do you recollect that going down? <laughs> we've heard Cy's version. Oh let me just let me start it off for you. I didn't ask you. Right, I know, but let me start it off for you. <laughs> I shot the first time and missed the deer. And I was so disgusted, I just unloaded the rifle and said, hey, come on, take me back to the lot. That Jordan's face says no. Yeah, it does. That was after about number three or four. No, that was the first time. First no, time I missed him. No. I said, hey, let him live. No. But then it just you got worse. You shoot the first that. time, and he kind of walks off, <laughs> and then he does come back. Yep. You shoot again. Yep. He just stands there looking. <laughs> you shoot again. He starts to walk off. Then you tried to get out of the blind, and we had like an hour left of daylight. I was like, "Hey, let's just let's just sit down. Like, what else we got to do?" I said, "Hey, so the, let, him, I, let him live." The other part of Jordan's job is professional therapist and coach in a deer blind because people get sad and want to quit. Yeah, they, you Jordan's know. got to talk them through it. Yeah, you got to talk them off the ledge. I mean, <laughs> so Sai had the yips. Yeah. Oh, bad, bad. But what? but what's what I will say about him is that he knew he did. He kept he. Just kept talking to himself. Oh my gosh, I can't shoot worth it. Dang it. I mean, just kept on. Well, going. I had to, okay, because the guy that asked me, you're, you're sure you're up? And I said, no. I said, it's true then. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, hey, I missed this deer like five different times. Yeah. I'm talking about, okay, something. But you I, had it sighted I, in. I got to, I, yeah, I got to call my son because he borrowed it. And come to find out, yeah, he borrowed it. And when he was getting out of the deer stand, uh, oh, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, I dropped your rifle. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I treated it in, and I could put three in a dime at 100 yards. Yeah. So, no. Nah. Yeah, that definitely wasn't the case that day. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. That's why I said his. Uh, How far was this deer? I, I, oh, it was anywhere, any, anywhere between 75 and 200. Like, yeah. I'm just saying between all six shots. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Somewhere in that area. In that area. 75 to 125. And most rifles are zeroed at 200. Correct. So, shouldn't have been a problem. No. Oh, no. Well, it got to a point where I was just watching where the bullet was going every time, and I was like, not nah, put it on his foot. And then maybe you'll hit him. No, 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 because uh, that's what I said. I said, guys, y'all are looking. I said, where's the stupid round hitting the dirt? Behind the deer, high, low, whatever. And they would say, all I know is you're shooting over him. So the last time, that's why I said the deer was from Japan. So they told me, said, okay, I've shot at him four times and missed. So I said, okay, there he is again. The idiot's back out there. I said, it's okay. I said, y'all say I'm shooting high. They said, yes, you're bound. You're definitely shooting high. So I said, okay. Crosshairs, the the horizontal crosshairs, below his belly, vertical crosshair right down his front leg, dead center middle, under the belly. I could see I could see the crosshairs 
If it ain't no, I ain't looking at deer. It ain't no deer meat. It's below his belly. And I go, boom. He drops. So we walk up there. And I said, I'm about 50 yards away. And I said, Matt. I said, where did I hit that deer? And he said, well, if you, you go bef- from the front shoulder up toward his face, halfway, dead center in the neck. And I said, I said, Matt, I said, where did y'all get that deer? I said, you bound, I said, you bound to bought him from the Japanese. And Matt said, what are you talking about, Japanese? I said, because, hey, I didn't kill that deer. I said, that deer actually committed suicide doing Harry Carey. The only thing he didn't do is he didn't have a knife to kill himself. I said, he just, he run into the bullet because I didn't kill him. Welcome to the duck call room, George. <laughs> wow, I've really been missing out. Uh-huh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is it. way more entertaining than that <laughs> editing room. Jordan, can you, you could probably get our man Hunter over there a little clip of this hunt, right? Oh, yeah. When yeah, Kath the shot. Yeah, we can. We One. Can. Oh, no, it's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Roll that beautiful thing. No, no, yeah, no, it is hilarious. Oh, Lord. I love hunting stories. Golly. They're, they're they, man, they're good. Well, let's take our last break. We'll be back right after this. And then we're going to get in that mailbox. We're sitting in a stand, okay, and we've been watching bucks, and there's six come out of the woods, just one behind the other, big bucks, y'all. And, and Eddie said, uh, y'all, I got my rifle on, looking at all of them, and he said, well, hey, pick the one you want. He said, I looked at all of them, and I said, well, I like this one right here better. He's got a better-looking rack. You know, so I just go popped in. You know. Remember, it hung in that in Willie's Duck Diner for forever. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, yeah. Deer. You know yeah. where that is now. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's him right there. Oh, that's, him. that's him. There he is. Yeah. That's him right there. Wait. That's him. Oh, yeah. That's, that's him. the one you missed six times? Oh, yeah. No, that's the one I missed five. I oh. killed him Kill, on the fifth kill. shot. Killed him on the sixth shot. I did not know the whole time that this duck. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, and it was in Willie's diner, like uh, Martin said. That's a big. Mm -hmm. Look at the mass on that joker, boys. That's a bull now. Just the dumb bull that lets you shoot seven times. Hey, on that one, it was six of us that hunted, (laughs) and we all killed a huge buck. Yeah, yeah. You had your grandson. Oh yeah, yeah. Phillips kid. Philip. Uh, you know. Oh yeah, that's when y'all all went. And oh yeah, big. we hey and and uh, uh, Bryce killed the biggest. Yeah, he scored two hundred and twenty eight <laughs> drop time, double drop times. Biggins, huge deer, Big. beautiful thing. I got me a good turkey hunting spot out of it too. Yeah, hold on. Well, jo- uh, oh, that old boy's got a good range now. Johnny D. Yes. What's in that mailbag? Jordan. Every week we answer our fans' emails or just see what they have to say. Um, I got big news though. This is my favorite part. Jake emailed in. Jake from Wu. He didn't say where he's from. Oh, good grief. We got Little Debbie cereal. Oh, oh wow. Little Debbie cereal. They went to ice cream and now they've gone to cereal, boys. I'm interested. Martin, why what's the what's the face? I'm not a cereal guy. Oh. Oh, I am. Never have been. Oh, I will slam a bowl of cereal. Really? Yeah, I, little Debbie would make you. Little Debbie's taking man. over the world, and I feel like oh. we're partially responsible as oh. like their lead unpaid spokespeople. Oh, them are good now. I mean, hey, oatmeal cream pies. And yeah, now they made them and cereal. Now they got it in a box and put milk on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just not a cereal guy. I don't know. For breakfast, I'd rather have eggs. Like, I don't, I don't know. I He's love not eggs. A cereal, man. I'd eat a dozen of them. All right, well, I just thought. Eggs? Over easy. I could eat a dozen of them. Yeah. Or I'll like boil hey. like. 15 or 20 of them oh, no, the no. week off. I, I do eat, that. Eat two for oh, breakfast. Have you got the uh, microwave thing? Yeah, the little egg bowler. Yeah. A little, yeah, little contraption. And hey, steamer. look, hey, that thing is cool. Yeah. You put a little water in it, put four eggs in it, put it in the microwave for like, I don't know, whatever time it is. Then before you take it out, you shake it, and hey, and you don't have to peel it. When you shake it, you just take the shell yeah. off of it and put the egg over there. Interesting. Mm-hmm. No, no. Perfect. Every time. You got one of those? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, egg shake pod. Egg something. Egg pod. Egg Can pod or something. Egg pod. Amazon. Yeah. Egg pod. Yeah. Egg Everything's pod. on Amazon. I like and hey, I like that. excellent. Yeah. I'm serious. Excellent. excellent. <laughs> it's yeah. eggs. Because I always take mine. I swapped got, over to the air fryer, though. I, oh, no. I've got a little uh, paper bowl. Put a little salt and pepper on the bottom of it. Throw two in there and roll them around. Get them all peppered and salt. I bet and that hey, is one salt of money. Egg. <laughs> Love them. And put a little lemon put a, on top of it. Put a little dash of vinegar in there with them. Oh, no, no, no. Forget to forget it. Oh, hey, no, my wife does that when she makes, uh, what, deviled eggs. Vinegar? 
Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. No, no. She okay. makes she makes them like three dozen. She made like pickled eggs. Oh no, like three dozen, and I eat them all. Boy, mm. three them, dozen, three dozen. Uh, what what I call them? Them deviled it? eggs give you some gas. Devil. Jack. Oh no, hey. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to be. I ate a lot of deviled <laughs> eggs. My mom makes. You don't want to be uh, around when I, I eat a dozen of eggs. Yeah. All right, next All email. Right. This one's not. A, this one's not a question either. But you know, if you put Johnny D is right in the subject line, I'm gonna read it. There you go. Uh, Trish from Caulfield, Missouri. After hearing Johnny D talk so much about his bidet, I bought one, and he's right. Life changing. Uh-oh. I love it. Sorry. Life changing. Thank you. Just further. I've been proven right again. I wonder when they're going to be there. My brother got one of those, and he said the same thing. Jordan, are you interested? No. What are they going to come up with, but not? I just, I can't. Instead of a bidet. (laughs) Can't do it. Everybody in here is against it, but I'm trying to change the world. Stones, Hey, J.D., he got stone. They got a bidet. Oh, yeah. Oh, I knew that. Yeah, you knew that. I forgot for a second. All right, anyway, all right, here's a real one. Oh, that one was real. Time out. That one was real. It's just here's one we can talk about and expand a little further. Austin's 24, loves the show, listens to every episode, but he needs some advice. He works for his dad in his cabinet shop, and he really likes his job. He's worked there for just over a year. I told him I would take a pay cut to work for him for a couple months. He had just opened, but uh, he hadn't gotten a raise since he started, and it's tough right now. Can't live on what he's making. It's getting frustrating. He's been thinking about going to welding school. Uh, for a few months so he can make some real money. That is true. I know a few yep. welders. They do well. Yep, big money. I also don't want to leave my dad high and dry if I do leave. What is your thoughts? Should I stick it out and hope for a raise, or do I go to school and in six months make over double what I make now? Advice. Working with dad. Mm. As a non-family member of a family business, <laughs> I, I don't really yeah. – I can't really glean a lot – I would talk to your dad. I mean, if you like working with your dad, there's a value you put on that. Figure out what that value is, if it's more than money or whatever. Like, you know, but if your dad said he was going to give you a raise, then ask him for one. Do you deserve one? I mean, yeah. Like, what What is known is manageable. It's manageable. That's a famous saying we have here in the Duck Call Room, Jordan. It's not famous. But. If you want to go to welding school, too, that's a great skill to have. And Absolutely. But hey, so hey. is building cabinets. There's a guy who's remodeling his house and just had to pay for cabinets. A lot of money in both of those fields. If you're willing to work hard and do a good job. Ain't that the truth. You make money welding or in a cabinet shop. Ain't that the truth. So if your dad has a cabinet shop, you might want to stick it out. Might want to stick it out. But I I think you just need to talk to your dad and say, hey, look, this isn't working for me right now. If we can bump myself. And your dad ain't going to. He's your dad. He ain't going to be like. Yeah, have you had to ask this day, big day for a raise yet? No, I'm not going to. Um, I'm scared of it. <laughs> Did you send this email? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Just making sure. Change well, back, it to cab- My dad used to work in a cabinet shop. I, just, I actually just changed everything. I'm back, tired of working with... No. Back to the welding class. You may want to do that. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. To have something to, to fall back on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because okay. you're only 24. If you can weld in a good one. Pipeline, especially on pipeline, is you'll always have to be going going out of town, so to speak. But hey, you make big money on pipelines. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just think you got to talk to your dad and see. And yeah. there, there's definitely benefits to working in a family business that's yep. already established, because you gotta you're the next in line. That's right. Yeah. Um, but but if your thoughts were there's a little confusing in there. If your thoughts were I'm going to work here for two months and get a raise, that probably like he said, I'm 24, just started here, been well, here a couple of months. Like, I think you're also 24 and just starting. So yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, there's a lot of lot to unpack there. And I don't know if he just was going to work there for a couple months and then like that was the expectation just to help his dad start it. Yeah, and maybe it is, maybe it was. But, but your time in. If you like doing it, I just talk to your dad. If you don't like doing it and you're telling you're looking for us to give you advice to get out of there, then go. <laughs> Yeah, like, just quit. Then go just to, go. Go to, welding. go to welding school. Yeah, yeah. It, like, and and if you're worried about your your dad's wants was your dad wants you to be successful. Mm-hmm. That's and right. he wants as, what's best for you. As a dad, and I know my dad. My dad, my dad probably wanted me to work at the Honey Hole far before I ended up back there, just because he wanted me to come work there. But he was happy for me when I was here because I was having fun. I was successful. I was doing a fun job. He, he wasn't like, man, I wish John David would come work for me. So your dad's not going to be like, oh no, he's going to do something else. Yeah. It, and if you were going to do something else that was silly, yeah. But going to welding school, that's that's a good call. Yeah, that's a good yeah. gig. 
Amen. That is a good call. Any more? Or one more. One more. Hit us, one, a, hit us with another. One more. Um, Jordan, you have kids, right? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, then you're prime person for this. Um, Austin. Where's Austin from? Austin doesn't say. Um, he's been listening. for Texas. <laughs> That's a bold statement. Hey. There's a one in 50 chance. Um, Uncle Si, I hope you live forever. You're one of his favorite people in the world. Well, well I appreciate that. He is going to live forever. Um, he, crap, he drives all over East Texas for work. How did you know? That's amazing. Uh, but here's his question. Do we have any advice for new parents? My wife and I are expecting in September with a baby boy, and my brother and his wife are expecting their first child, a baby boy, at the end of August. So that's pretty cool. Cousins are going to awesome. be super close in age. We would love any advice you guys have. Yeah, I'm listening. Look, here they are. They even got a picture of themselves with the pregnant ladies. There you go. I'm listening. Y'all both married up, by the way. I'm just going to say it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what y'all got for new parents? New parents. Jordan, you've had kids longer than me. Yeah, I've got a, uh, a 13 going on 14-year-old and an 8-year-old. And I would say, if anything, time has flown by so fast. I mean, I remember when they were little bitty babies holding them in the hospital, and it has just flown by, and I, I wish I could have done way more and soaking up the moment throughout their lives. And so I would encourage that. Always just live each day to the fullest with them and encourage them and, and help them grow and teach them things. I mean, there's you're going to do all that anyway, but uh, it, it's just going to go by so quick. So just make sure you take that that time with with both of your kids or i mean that's good it, it advice. just flies by that's good advice i remember a man telling me and i was about 25 and he was about my age told me hey enjoy enjoy your life take time to smell the roses yep okay because one of these days and he he said it one of these days it'd be like tomorrow you'll be my age and that's the way it seemed my daughter, good grief, I remember like you're talking about, holding her and having her sat in my lap. And the next time I know, she's met some dude and got married and lives in Texas. <laughs> and you got four kids. Yeah, four you got grandkids. four grandsons. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, it yeah, that's by. But I would say this. Go read about God's man, Job. Okay? And you'll learn a little bit about patience. Because... You know, that's what I asked God for was patience, and uh, then uh, my wife was pregnant. <laughs> I didn't know what I was asking. <laughs> but <That's good> stuff. <laughs> in retrospect, now that I look at it, well, it taught me patience. There's your answer. There's your answer. Yeah, my only thing, uh, my new piece, it's new because I ain't been doing it, just f being forthright here. Uh, I just read a book called Dad Tired, and I was like, I'm tired, and I'm a dad. I'll read it. Um, Makes sense. And... It was really good, but the, the the thing he stressed was mix Jesus into everything. Mm. Don't just discipline and tell them that they're doing wrong because of they're doing wrong. Like, don't just say don't hit. Mix Jesus into that, and and everything you do, point them to Jesus, and at the end of the day, everything will end up all right. That's biblical. That's gonna be our Bible verse of the day too. Mm. But. Uh, that that I really took a lot from that. I'm like, I'm getting mad at my kids and telling them how to do stuff and and tell them how we should treat people. But sometimes I just tell them, hey, you need to be nice to people. I don't tell them why. Yep. And so it's just a, one thing to always remember. Like, okay, I'm about to teach this human being something that they don't know because they're six and they're not. You know, they just all they want to do is play video games and fall guys and go outside and roll around in dirt. But when I'm going to teach them something, I'm going to teach it to them as best I can through the eyes of Jesus. And if you do that, you're going to have some pretty solid kids when they're adults. And you'll be able to look back and be proud of it. So there's my advice, Austin. There you go. Martin? Well, I can't tell you. Learn that. anything? No, not yet. <laughs> I'll, not let you know, I'll let you know how to deal with two of them. Hey, his shortly. time is coming. His time is coming. <laughs> coming. He's going to have, have two of them babies in the arm here soon. He's got uh, double ergos, holding one on the front, one on the back, and just oh, walking boy. around the grocery store. I can't wait to well, see What's that mama going to Shopping. Oh. I carried Lottie around on one of them things all around Disney World. It was the time of my life. <laughs> I just w I always wanted to have two. It'd be fun. Uh, well, buddy, come get you some. Come get you some. Whenever you want them. That's funny. All right, here's our – so I alluded to it. Here's your verse for the day. This goes out to Austin and his brother and their 
family expecting two kids. Proverbs 22, 6, start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. We've done that one before, but it's worth doing again. Yep. And we're probably going to do it again one day. So it back. always point them to Jesus, my man. Take Jesus with you everywhere you go, boys. Whoop, whoop. We're out. <laughs>